In this video, I'm gonna break down how I color grade my sports videos. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. My name is Pete Gottrak, content producer for Major League Baseball. And in today's video, I wanted to take y'all through how I color grade my videos. Now, just a quick note before this, I just want to say I usually color grade to make stuff match, to make stuff look a little bit tad stylized, and obviously just to get my log footage back to looking nice and crispy out of that neutral color profile. So if you're looking for a super creative, super stylized way of color grading, this isn't gonna be the video for y'all. So today I'm going to show y'all how I do it out of the log color profiles and I'm gonna work with C log. With S log, it's gonna be pretty same principles. And then I'm also gonna take you through like how I would do it with a player edit or with my normal game footage or something in my reel. Enough talking, let's get into this. Let's go into Premiere Pro here. And as you can see on my timeline, I have a Max Freed pitching clip, tight slow motion from the 2021 season. Pretty standard shot of mine, pan up get him pitching and the thing I like about this shot is he looks this way kind of towards the direction of the camera pretty cool vantage point if you ask me but as you can see it is shot in a log color profile and if you are unfamiliar with what log is every camera manufacturer producer has their own log profile Canon's is C log they have C log one two three I think that's it S log there's also a couple different ones for Sony log profiles allow you to make a more stylized edit or a stylized color grade when you're doing it whenever we shoot YouTube originals we use it whenever we shoot production type stuff we use it to try and max match different locations settings exposures white balances whatever it gives you more versatility when brightening things up and dropping things down working with certain parts of the image for the first part of this tutorial I'm going to get y'all from C log or other log profiles back to the normal your eyes would see first thing we want to do is go up to the top right corner and go to workspaces and go down to color, and that will bring up our Lumetri color bar here on the side. If you do not see this, go up to window and make sure your Lumetri color is clicked off. Another way you can bring up the effects here of Lumetri color is go to the effects panel, type in Lumetri color, and that'll show it there, and you just drag it on, and then it'll show up in your effects controls tab. To start this off, we wanna go up into our Lumetri color basic correction workspace, click that drop down, go into input LUT, and as you can see, these are some pre-made LUTs that are in here for Alexa and Amira cameras. See, I did not shoot this clip on an Alexa or an Amira. I wish I had. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using a C-Log3 LUT that was free on YouTube by Brian Adam Castillo. I will link the video below in the description, but this is gonna help us get back to a normal looking image from this C-Log shot. So as I mentioned, you're gonna wanna click into your basic correction tab in your Lumetri color workspace here. Click the drop down browse and this will allow you to go into your LUTs folder or your, your finder and find your LUTs. And this is where mine is placed inside of my folder. Click it and there we go. That's our default image off the bat. As you can see, just by looking at this, I think that's a little, a little hot, which is a little overexposed. I think it's a little warm as well in the white balance department, just a tad. But other than that, it's a pretty good image. So if we take our white balance eyedropper here and find a white part on the image, do that and that will automatically get us a white balance reading and fix it a little bit for us. And I don't mind this, it seems a little blue. So I'm gonna drop this temperature to negative 10. And then I'm also going to drop this pink, take a little pink out and go to 7.5. maybe 8.5. The more you stress over this color, the more you stare at it, the more you, you adjust things, the more you're gonna go crazy and it's gonna drive you insane. So I suggest not spending too much time on it, on color grading, don't overthink it. Maybe when you're looking at your screen, look away for a second just to reset your eyes because the more you do it, the more you overthink it, the more it's gonna look kind of whack. That's always been my theory on it. Going back to this, the white balance here looks pretty good. I do think this is a little bright, so I'm gonna drop the exposure to minus 0.2, and that'll take like almost a quarter stop off, and I think that's a pretty good final image. If we play it from the beginning and speed it up, that's what we're getting. 
if you have a multitude of clips and you wanna put one LUT on a bunch of them, what you can do is click new item, adjustment layer, and drag it over. And what you can do is apply your Lumetri color to the adjustment layer, and that is going to apply that Lumetri to everything under it, if that makes sense. So like, if I take this clip, multiply it again, if these were two different clips, that Lumetri color is going to be applied over both of these clips. If that makes sense, I should have explained that in the beginning of this video. That is generally how I do it. Now I'm gonna show y'all how I create a more stylized look using LUTs that I've used in the past. And this would be more for like a player edit or a short film or something that needs a moodier look. I'm gonna use the same Max Free clip just so we have that comparison and, and, and it's easier for y'all to understand the difference in looks and what I'm talking about. Go back up to our clip here that is back in log. Hit browse again to get into your LUTs folder wherever that is. I'm gonna go down to this K-Tone vintage Kodachrome look. It's kind of gonna be like this orangey teal look but not cheesy like the M31, one that everyone uses. And if we apply that, as you can see, it's very, very much more contrasted and it's just very dark so far. The shadows are a little underexposed. I'm gonna brighten those up just a little bit. And you can see this image just has way more greens and blues in the, in the shadows and the highlights, but that contrast, that extra moodiness, the faded blacks, is going to appear a lot more vintage and a lot more stylized. Another thing we need to do is reset our white balance. So if we reset our white balance back to zero and zero, that is gonna give us a pretty green look, which I do not like. I'm gonna take out a lot of the green and actually put it back to like a six. But I like that a lot. See how the blacks are a lot more faded than the other image. If we put these side by side, right here, and if you do a comparison view, that will let you kind of track these. Let's put our image right here and right here. On the timeline, you can see the difference in looks. That is the standard color grade, and that is the darkened, more eye candy, eye candy look that I just did with my vintage LUT. There's a lot more greens in the shadows. The blacks are faded a little bit. And overall, I just like that look a lot better for this specific clip. If I'm doing a more edited look, I think that's gonna look a lot better. Now, if I wanna do this same process on a clip that is not out of C-Log, if I wanna make a stylized edit, I'm going to basically take an adjustment layer, as I mentioned already, apply it above my clip. Right here, we have a Nick Castellanos clip that is shot in the normal Canon color profile on the C70 in slow-mo. As you can see, it's just the lights flickering before Game 2 of the World Series. So what I'm gonna do is go into that adjustment layer, make sure that is clicked, back up to your Lumetri color tab, click browse, and go down to your vintage LUT again. And as you can see, that is going to just demolish the image there. It's just gonna make it way too contrasty. So we can't use this, this basic correction tab. Go back to hit none, go down to creative, go back to look, and then you can do the same thing in the browse tab. And then you're gonna drop this down to like a 20 on intensity. And you can control the intensity as much as you would like. But I'm gonna drop it to 20 if I want a more subtle look. Here it is the clip as you can see. I like how that looks. It just adds a subtle bit of correction if you click on the creative tab and get rid of the effect for a little bit. It just adds a little bit of blues in the shadows and a little bit of oranges in the highlights. Nothing too crazy and you can go back in and play with it however you would like as I already mentioned. And that concludes this video, y'all. I hope you were able to gain some value. I hope you learned a thing or two. And if you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. It would mean a lot. Um, to keep growing this channel. That's the goal for this year. So anyways, thanks again. Make sure you like and subscribe and I will see y'all in the next one.